we're like little closets all stuffed with these feelings and emotions that we've just pushed way down. Emotions and feelings are something we all experience, yet we are not taught at any age on how to manage them, how to direct them, how to experience them well. When we become aware of the body sensations of emotions, then we can get ahead of it and direct it. Feelings and emotions are in many ways fleeting, yet we are kind of through language taught to make them our identity. If you address it as it comes up, then you don't start to identify with the emotion. You don't start to identify with the feeling. That's the constant, and the feelings are experiences as we understand ourselves as love. Then we can really get through anything. So we've talked about it a few times on different podcasts, and it brings up questions each time we do, and that's diving into not being our emotions and the difference between emotions and feelings, because they've been used so synonymously together. So I wanted to really take some time to you know, talk about why it's important to know the difference between emotions and feelings. and help individuals understand because there was a time in my life I was battered around by my emotions and then those emotions became feelings and then those feelings got triggered and brought those emotions right back up again. And so if we can create ways to understand that we're not those emotions, we're not bound to that cycle and there are things that we can do to begin to decouple that so that they don't sit and become those feelings, feelings of resentment, feelings that hit our self-worth. Then it becomes like, oh, I am the, I can, I direct the domain within. I have a chance to not let it just sit with me and drag me down, mm. right? Yeah. I mean, it's so important that we're having this discussion and that others have this discussion because emotions and feelings are something we all experience. Yet we are not taught at any age, let alone, you know, when we're young, on how to manage them, how to direct them, how to experience them well. I mean, we're taught all these other things that I, I'm not really using the Pythagorean theorem a lot right now, um, but I use my emotions and feelings every single day. Yes. So why is that not at the forefront, especially when we're children? to learn how to manage and direct our emotions and feelings. Yes. And it's important to say manage and direct because the moment we attempt to control our feelings is the moment that our feelings start to control us. Same with our emotions, right? Yes. And so it's important to say that they're going to be there. I can't control them and lock them away. But what I can do is understand the purpose of them how to utilize them to the best of my ability to help me grow and understand the circumstance I'm in right now. Yes. Right? So it's a tool, just like any other tool. Very much a tool. And understanding that they aren't our identity. Feelings and emotions are in many ways fleeting, yet we are kind of through language taught to make them our identity. I am angry. Mm -hmm. I am sad. I am frustrated. It's all these I am's, and then we fill in the blank of, of, a, of a, something that we are experiencing in that moment. And through that process, we're identifying who we are on a repeated basis. And I think that's maybe a good place to start yes. in terms of understanding how, how to adjust how we actually talk about our feelings and, and our emotions, recognizing that that's not who we are. Like, hey, I'm f it could be as simple as I'm, I'm feeling frustrated right now. I am frustrated right now. Yes. And it's key because the more you say, like, I am frustrated, I am angry, I am the things, as you pointed out, then you start to identify as I am an angry person. Yes. That's just my nature. I am a volatile person. Like, my emotions swing back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, it becomes that almost sometimes even a conditional state of being. Like, I don't know who I am if I'm not feeling this. Right. right. And other people might label like, oh, they're a hothead. Yes. You know, like they're, they're always get angry. And then people start to walk on eggshells around you because they don't want to get you upset because they don't want to get yelled at. And that's not actually who you are. Right. Exactly. 
So let's talk about the difference between emotions and feelings for anyone who hasn't seen a previous podcast where we discuss this. You know, our emotions are those physical feelings that we get and sensations. When I say feelings, I mean like sensations. So the moment something triggers in you, it sparks that emotion. And it could be joy, like we talk about anger and frustration, but it could be like that, that emotion of joy and love and connection, right? We get a body sensation. If it's love, joy, we feel uplifted. Our chest goes open. We're just like, whoa, here I am, world. And like our body responds to that. And the more we do that, then we're creating those feelings of safety, of happiness, of joy, and that stays with us. Like that's how our brain interprets it, stores it as a memory, and then recalls it Mm -hmm. in future similar situations, right? So then it can be a trigger for positivity or for feelings and emotions that you may not desire in the future. And so when we become aware of the body sensations of emotions, then we can get ahead of it and direct it if it's not one that we want to register as a feeling to come up again and again and again. We can say, oh, when I'm frustrated or I'm starting to feel anxious or I'm starting to feel angry, I feel this in my body. And for me, when those sensations arise, I start to feel like that pit in my stomach, right? And then I can feel almost, we call it blood boiling, Mm. because you do, you get that hot feeling that starts to go throughout your body. Usually if you're in a state of joy, you're not feeling that pit in your stomach and that feeling that's radiating (laughs) through you, right? And so you can then go, oh, I know this sensation. I know what emotions are being sparked in this moment. I'm going to use that as information for myself, information to let me know how to direct what emotion is triggered. And if it's anger or frustration, what tools do I have so that it doesn't stay with me? So next time a situation like this occurs, my brain doesn't recall the same feeling and then compile on top of each other because we just love to do that, right? We're like little closets all stuffed with these feelings and emotions that we've just pushed way down. And one day you're going to open that closet door and it's all just going to hit you. But if you address it as it comes up and then you direct, oh, I'm going to put that here or no, I don't necessarily need this for the future. So I'm just going to let it go. And here's a tool for letting it go. Then you don't start to identify with the emotion. You don't start to identify with the feeling. And you understand that it's, um, it's information coming at you so that you can say, oh, these types of situations tend to make me feel this way. So then I can do something about how that feeling is coming up and what I'm going to do with it. I love that. I feel like that's such a a key way to allow ourselves to to remember that we're allowed to have a feeling about something. And then that feeling, as you're saying, is not our identity. So it's not defining us just because we have a feeling because we may only have that feeling for a very short amount of time to allow us to process. I think a lot of society really struggles is that we almost aren't either, either we don't allow ourselves or others to have the actual feelings around a situation. Yeah. And that's tough because, you know, especially as, as someone, like maybe you're in a communication, right? And you're communicating to someone, you are meaning one thing, the other person receives it in a different way. And I know I get, I get caught in this a lot because, <laughs> because I, I genuinely mean something and sometimes I don't always say it in the way that is best. Maybe it makes sense to me, but it doesn't make sense to someone else in the way that they understand it. And I think we've all can experience that. And it, it's tough because like, we don't know what's going on in other people's heads and we only are aware of what's happening in ours, right? So, um, you know, and then, and then it causes a reaction, right? And, and it's like, it, it's hard because then you just don't 
you don't want to experience, you don't want them to experience that. Like that's not the goal. Actually, maybe the goal of what was said was the exact opposite of that. Uh, and through this process of communication, I've learned that, wow, like they still, even though you don't want them to have that, which might be a beautiful, kind and caring and loving thing, that's still negating and allowing them, like not allowing them to actually have the feeling that they should be allowed to feel. Yeah. It's like and, being a child and being told not to cry. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or like if, if whatever that feeling is, it might be fleeting and that's okay. And that may not be the exact intention across the board. But they, they, we need to hold space and allow that to be felt. And that doesn't mean that like just because I said something doesn't make me wrong or just because you're feeling it doesn't mean you're wrong, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that's a good, a really strong differentiator. And, and when I had that understanding, I feel like that really helped me move through the emotional landscape that, that we experience because it almost in some ways feels like a minefield as you're like, how do I do this? And how do I say this? And because it's like every little thing, you definitely feel like you're walking on eggshells because uh, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings and you don't want to come off in a way that you don't intend. And, and then at some points it feels like, oh man, I, I just, I don't even know what, to, I don't know how to say what I'm feeling. And then that starts to bottle up. And so it's tough <laughs> is where yeah. we're going with this. It's, it is complicated, but there are ways to uncomplicate it. And that's really the focus to me of, for me today is like, I feel like that's us having that conversation and showing different ways to, to manage these and, and, and allow others and yourself to have the feelings to, as you're saying, be data points to inform us of the deeper emotion that we might be experiencing and the understanding that we might be experiencing because we could have a feeling and recognize that's not actually the emotion we're experiencing. Right. Because it triggered from the past, Correct. right? And it has nothing to do with the situation that you're in. Exactly. Can you expand yeah. on that? Um, absolutely. That goes to emotions being registered as feelings and then being stored in your brain or in your, I say, in your body, because a lot of times these feelings get stored in the same place in our body that the emotion arose, right? And so now I'm sitting in a completely different situation with a completely different person, but they said or did something that triggered that feeling again, then that feeling create, sparked the emotion the same emotion. And so it's getting reinforced over and over if we don't take the time to get ahead of it and pull ourselves back and go, but wait a moment, is that the situation I'm in right now? Is the person the same person or am I allowing my feelings to trigger emotions that may not be exactly the same in this scenario? And then what can I do if I recognize that that is the case? Mm -hmm. Like I'm being, we say all the time, triggered, I'm triggered, I'm triggered. What are my triggers? But we don't just leave those triggers there, especially when it comes to feelings, because again, there's still information. They're still informing us. And if we're getting triggered and we're in a different situation with a different person, then it might be that we need to go, all right, what unresolved feelings and emotions do I have around this and how can I navigate through them and take from it what I desire to take and leave the rest, let go of the rest. And I'm going to share a little bit, like we just went through this, right? Mm -hmm. Just last weekend, we were at an event and because the event had so much information and we didn't really get a chance to sit and talk about things. It was kind of a side discussion here and a side discussion there very, very quickly, like boom, boom, boom. It was very easy to get caught in what you were just mentioning. You thought you were saying one thing to me and that was your intention and your feeling behind it, but it sparked an emotion in me where this was something I had gone through often in my life. And so not only was there an emotion, it then brought back all the feelings, all of the feelings that were in me around that. So I'm having 
an emotion about what you said, and then it triggered all those feelings, which then compounded all of the other emotions. And when I noticed that was what was happening within me, I had to go, wait a second. This is not how my partner typically speaks to me. So why would I think he's speaking to me like that right now? I would like to take time to explore it so I understand what it means for me, but also what it means for you and your emotions and what's firing so that it doesn't create feelings of resentment in you for getting ang- me getting angry over something, right? So what we decided to do, and this is incredibly helpful if you're in like a partnership or family or someone you can do this with, and that's we didn't address it in the moment. We gave ourselves like a pause to get some time in between the emotion and the feeling and then connecting. Mm -hmm. Then we found a quiet place, which was not easy where we were, but we found a quiet little corner. We held hands. So we created an actual physical connection. So both of our hands were holding on to each other. We looked each other in the eye so that we could hear each other's point of view without overstepping it. And the more I heard your point of view connected, like physically connected, energetically connected by looking at each other, then the emotion was able to die down. I wasn't not hearing you because the emotion was so loud that I couldn't get past that. I could hear what you had to say. Here you tell me, well, this is what my intention was. And you could hear my side of it, like, okay, I understand, but here is why I felt the way that I felt. And the more you heard me and I heard you, we were able to clearly look at the information available and not be like, your fault, your fault. How dare you say that to me? I could look in and go, okay, yeah, I bring a lot of baggage to this party and it's time to offload some of that. Still, no matter how deep I've gone into my emotions, there's still some there. We all do. Yeah. And give gratitude in some ways for you uncovering it Mm. so that I could look into it and say, all right, what's helping me and what's not? And in this case, it was almost like silencing my voice, right? Mm -hmm. For so long, my voice had been silenced. And you made one comment that triggered that within me but it was not your intention. Mm -hmm. And so I then had to unpack all those emotions Mm -hmm. and all those feelings around having my voice silenced, but you held space for me as I did. And simultaneously, you were navigating through, man, I just said the wrong thing again. Are you kidding me? (laughs) And so I was able to hold space for you so that you understood. It's not that you said the wrong thing. This is, as you said, there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just me and the way that I was interpreting it. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to direct all of our feelings that resulted from those emotions and choose what are we going to do with them. Yeah. Yeah. It was so helpful that because we were in the middle of hearing a talk, right? And Mm -hmm. as you're saying, it was, we had to be quick with the information that was being discuss because we wanted to also hear what was being said and so those are tough because it's it's like you want to talk but you also kind of can't and so you're kind of short but you're attempting to be uh you know respectful and so it's it may not come out in the right way and so the fact that one we didn't get mad at each other in the moment Mm -hmm. we allowed we like you said put that pause i I, that was such a huge benefit because sometimes I see it all the time, like airports or events or like people just get mad and react and then just yell at each other in like a public space in front of each, you know, in mm-hmm. front of everyone. It's like that, that can't be helpful. Um, you know, then there's other things that, you know, then other emotions like embarrassment or, um, you know, sadness or, you know, all these other things start to, to compound in that moment that didn't need to happen. And so we, we trusted that, you know, we're not, we're not coming at each disagreement or each situation at a place of like you know got ya yeah you know we we are coming at 
each other from this place of or like seeking to understand from each other, knowing that we both have each other's best interest at heart always. From that standpoint, then you can make a quick pause in situations like that without harboring um, you know, anger uh, towards the other person or you know, just allowing it just to pause and relax. And you can flow through things and we have the moment to talk and it is the appropriate time like we did you know, making that hand connection like we did, and then taking that moment to understand from each other's perspective what was occurring, you know, allowing you, know, you shared your perspective without me interrupting, I shared my perspective without you interrupting, and we both were able to effectively understand where each other was coming from. Mm-hmm. And we both were like, okay, if I were in your shoes, I would totally understand that. And then we recognize we're in the same spot the whole way. We just approached it slightly differently than we than we would have, you know, but you know, we're two different people. That's we we choose things differently in 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 a lot of ways, especially in, in communication and in, in certain things. So um but just being able to recognize that we do have those that you know we love each other and so let's give each other the benefit of that doubt and let's hear each other out and not just jump to conclusions. Let's actually seek to understand where they're coming from. In recognizing that there was love all the way around the whole time, and so sometimes things are just misinterpreted, ins- interpreted, right? Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah, you know, it's okay to make a mistake. It doesn't mean I'm wrong or you're wrong or I'm bad or you're bad. It just is. And so if we can just let go and and release, and we allow that, like those, what you were feeling, what I was feeling, weren't our identities. You know, if there is any I am statement, it's it's around I am love. Uh-huh. That's an identity that we can bring forward, and then that's the constant, and the feelings are experiences as we understand ourselves as love. Then we can really get through anything. Yeah. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And I know not everyone like I. I'm not encouraging someone to walk up to their boss at work if their boss is triggered frustration and say, can I hold your hands for a moment? Let's just look at each other. Now, maybe you work in a space where that's okay, but maybe you don't too. Mm -hmm. But then the key is to have allow yourself to experience the emotion so that it can inform you. Unpack that emotion. So that the feelings that it may have triggered that were from the past experiences don't get brought into the present experience, right? So in that pause, you could have a moment to unpack what is happening Mm -hmm. and really ask yourself that vital question. And who cares? Maybe as you're practicing this, it takes a few minutes the first few times. That's okay. I mean, that's the point of practice, right? And then as you pause and unpack, you look at perspective, right? Pause, unpack, perspective. Because as you pointed out, if I wasn't willing to look at it from a different perspective outside of what was being triggered in me, I wouldn't have been able to say, I know you wouldn't intentionally silence my voice. So. What is it that's truly going on within me? And so I could look at it from your perspective, and then I could look at it from my perspective again and say, okay, I get this. I get this. And now I need to decide what I'm going to do with it. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a work situation and somebody has triggered that frustration in you and you can't create that connection, then you can at least create some kind Maybe it's not a physical connection, but maybe it's the shifting of perspective that creates that connection. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing thing. But if we don't take the time to practice this, to pause, unpack, look at perspective, and then put into place, put things into the place that you desire them to go then you're going to constantly be battered around by your emotions Mm -hmm. and you're going to react to them instead of being able to use them as that information and respond to them. Yeah. 
beautifully said, when we do react, then they start to, they start to fuel our ego and they do become our identity because we're allowing them to, Yeah, they don't have to be, you know, and that's, and that's part of the thing when it's almost in some ways, like it's, it's good to point out triggers, right? I mean, they're, it's important for us to understand, as you said, they're points of, in, of information for us. But the problem is, is sometimes it seems like society is almost left it at that. Like, okay, if I feel triggered, then I am the victim Mm -hmm. instead of, and then just stop there, like hard stop, right? And then I get to experience what I'm experiencing and then blame someone else for it. I think that's one of the fundamental problems with the way that we're managing and processing emotions right now as a society. Triggers aren't an excuse for us to put others down, nor our emotions, you know, are, it's, it's, it's not our, like anything that we feel, I, 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 at least my, my feeling around it is that when we feel something, it's our own responsibility and it's our own opportunity for growth. And so like in those moments, you weren't, even though you were feeling something, you weren't putting it on me or making me the bad guy or um you know making it seem like okay you're right you know you're on a you're righteous for the way you feel because and then make in lifting your ego up Mm -hmm. right and so that was one of my that's one of the things that i love about the way you process emotion is that it isn't from an egoic standpoint or to uh, place yourself above another in some way it's uh, it's truly a, a data point Without like, like this isn't just pure logic. It's not like, oh, yeah. I don't have any feelings or any emotions. This is like, data. There's no heart in this. Yeah, I'm just no going to take data, data, logic. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 we're capable of dual processing. That's what we mean when we are, when we are engaging in heart and mind and we are creating a balance and a harmony between those. It means that we are taking information from both. Information is important. You know, data might be logical, but information like emotions and what we feel in our heart is information for us and how we process it logically is an experience of that information. Yeah. And half the time, let's be honest, emotions are not logical, right? That's right. That's why we don't think emotions, we feel emotions. Yes. Right? And so I love that you went down this path because when we say use it as information, that doesn't mean that you're always going to understand why that situation triggered the emotion. Maybe you don't, but at least you're not allowing yourself to be battered around by it. So as you're unpacking it, you might go, well, wait a second. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why this is happening. And so maybe it's a brand new emotion and it's not logical. And that's, that's perfect, right? But it's still telling you something about yourself, logical or otherwise. And so as you unpack it, it's like, okay, I've not felt this before. I don't have anything else around it. I don't understand why it's coming up, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And so then the next thing is, what am I going to do with it? Right? You still have the opportunity to look at different perspectives and then decide where you're going to place whatever you unpacked, right? Mm -hmm. Is it going to stay with me? Or am I going to let it go? Like how many of us have gotten trinkets that we don't know what the frick to do with and we don't even know what it is, right? We're mm-hmm. just like, okay, I don't, I don't know what was in my head when I ordered this, but what am I going to do with it is always the next question. Do I put it on the shelf hoping one day it'll come in and be useful? Or do I say, I've got enough. I don't desire to overcrowd my inner space. And so I need to let this go because it's not serving me. Yeah. And it's not like, like for us in those, in that moment, it's not like you then put that, since you didn't want that emotion or didn't have, you know, not like you put it on me and said, okay, now you take it. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's important too. Um, To me, in terms of a partnership, like that's, that's not a loving act. That's just here. You just take it. And and it's like, okay, well, that's not going to help. The situation. Yes, it because the next time you. we're in a discussion, yeah. you're going to be like, well, I took this, now you take it back. Yeah, right. Right. 
And then we're just volleying back and forth with the same emotion. Exactly. We're not, we're not allowing it to be let go. And I think that's a big aspect of this is, is grace, Mm -hmm. right? You know, giving ourselves grace, giving the other person or people grace and just allow ourselves to make mistakes. Like, Hey, we're not every communication that we have isn't going to be perfect. It isn't no word is going to be said right every single time. And even if it is, it could, there's no way it could be to someone else. It might be exactly the way you intend in the exact way and the right words you would say, because that's what those words mean to you. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what those words mean to someone else. And so from, if you view it from that perspective, you're, you're just, you're not going to ever win. But at some point, we have to recognize that communication is about winning and losing. It's about who's right or who's wrong. It's about seeking to understand and sharing and connecting. That's what communication is all about. It's about unifying each other, sharing how we feel, what we think, what we're experiencing, and then connecting in that and playing in that, giving each other grace for that. Like that, that to me is love in action. Yeah. So beautifully stated. And when we allow, you know, if our emotions have become our identity or we're battered around by them, then we block that connection. Mm -hmm. And that's why the perspective step of this is so, so important because if the emotion is just like swirling and then it's triggering all those other feelings, but I don't take the time to say, okay, here's your perspective on this. Even if, again, I don't logically understand because we're different people, at least it will pull me out of my ego long enough to have that pause between myself and my ego and then say, okay, maybe that's not how I would address it, but I'm not you and that's okay. And so what am I able to do to direct what is occurring in my emotional state and in this situation right now as a result of that, right? It isn't always about, as you said, winning because there is no winning if someone is in an emotional space where they feel those heavier emotions. Right. And, you know, we can look at it from maybe you lost somebody that you care about, whether it's the relationship ended or they've passed away. You're going to have all types of emotions around that. But could you also have emotions of gratitude? Could you also bring in some of those lighter feeling emotions to? Add to anything that you're packing, you decide to hold on to around that situation. And so we can also choose what we're going to pull in in some ways when we're deciding what we're going to do with something. Yes, I hurt. I'm not silencing my emotion around this. This is true for me. Don't silence your emotions. But then you can use perspective to go, But how lucky am I, how fortunate am I to have had the time to have gained the insights through the connection with the individual? And we bring in those higher emotions that can help us at least balance out a little bit. And so the next time we think about that person, it isn't that we think about them when we feel pain because that's what we packed away. We think about them and we still feel sad for missing them, but we feel so grateful at the same time for having their presence in your life. And that's what I had to do when I lost my brother this past year, right? It was devastating. And there's still pain. I can't pretend like there's not. How lucky was I to have him as my brother for that long? And so my heart also opens up with that gratitude that, you know, my life was blessed because of this person that taught me so much about myself. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be the person I am today mm-hmm. if my brother wasn't part of my life. 
And so I can have both feelings, still miss him and feel sad, but also feel so grateful and so happy. And that's what I chose to unpack. Now, that had nothing to do with you or anybody else around me. I had to sit and unpack that for myself as I navigated the situation, Mm -hmm. right? And so these steps work, whether you're engaged with someone else or it's something like that, where it's not exactly like you can go up to the person and engage with them and say, you made me feel this way, right? It is, I can sit and I can create the pause and I can unpack what it's about and I can look at different perspectives and then I can choose where to put it away. Yeah. It's, thank you for sharing that. And that's beautifully said. And if more people, instead of pointing fingers, like you made me feel this way, maybe just ask, like, hey, is this, is this what you intended? Because maybe they didn't. Mm-hmm. And that's such a key. F- I mean, that's, that's a huge adjustment. We just asked instead of assumed. That could make a world of difference because yeah, maybe we might find some people who are looking to silence us or making us feel that. But if you ask that to them and then that's now it's on them to understand, well, did I? Now that's causing a reflection, which is so important. That may be exactly what that person needed in that moment. That's a beautiful thing too. I mean, maybe that might adjust the whole way that they view communication just after that simple question, because maybe it was all, maybe it wasn't necessarily intended. Maybe it, it, you know, subconsciously or, or, you know, subconsciously came out that way, but maybe consciously they're attempting to mask a part of themselves that they're not happy with. And then they realize, wow, I'm here. I am being a bull here, being mean or you know, putting other people down, but I'm the one who feels hurt. I'm the one who feels the pain. And so I just want to connect. So I want other people to feel that. So I can actually feel connected. Maybe that isn't the best way. Maybe I can feel connected to people through joy and through love and through care and through happiness. And and there are other ways. But if we don't ask that question, instead of taking everything, you know, personally, trust me, it's hard to do. <laughs> I'm not saying this is easier said, you know, this is easier said than done. Yes. Um, you know, there's a reason why it's not, oh, it's just as easy as said as done. <laughs> it's, that's not quite the statement, you know. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, but it's just that opportunity for us to just just start to act like, you know, just ask, like, hey, is this what you intended? Giving them grace, giving yourself grace, allowing that feeling to occur, allowing the perspective to be experienced allowing a pause to happen and then everyone can get on the same page in a matter of seconds. Yeah. Like this isn't, we're not talking, you need to do an hour pause here and do a reflection and sit in the corner. But like if you need is, to, it's okay. If you do, sure, sure. If you need to, it's okay. <laughs> yes. It's better to do that than to carry that baggage around with you for a very long time. Yes. Right. So true. So true. But oftentimes we want to say, oh, it's going to take so long. But the reality is, is that it doesn't. And and so we can't, it, it is amazing what those extra couple seconds or even a couple minutes can do and shifting the whole dynamic of uh, a day or a relationship or an experience or a trip, you know, how many of these things come up during, during those that, that alter the whole, the whole rest of the experience, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure everyone's been on a trip and something happened right at the beginning and then the rest of the trip was like, Ugh. You know, yeah, everybody's like, like uh, uh, yeah. uh, and everybody's when, clipping at each other, yeah. Right, when all it just could have been a simple misunderstanding. Yes. That could have, in a matter of moments, could have been have gotten everyone on the same page, moved them through, and then had a beautiful trip the rest of the time. Exactly. It's like, it, it can be that simple if we allow it to be. If we get out of our own way, release our ad- identity, don't let our egos overtake everything, mm-hmm. don't take everything as... Um, you know, as a personal hit, and then just seek to understand. Seek to understand. Yeah. And that's one thing that I feel like, you know, we're talking about this because it's our life too. Like we navigate these things. Yeah. And then we put these into practice, the things that we're talking about, so that we know if they're effective or not. 
And in this case, as you just mentioned, you could ask, is this what you intended? Which is what I did when mm -hmm. we were at the event. I was like, did you intend to silence my voice? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it felt like to me. Mm -hmm. And you like instantly, how, why, what? That's, that's not what I meant. Mm -hmm. And so then we took the pause so that you could contemplate and I could understand like, no, this is not what he would typically do. So what, what's going on within me? But at least we could get it out on the table and not have it be, I didn't sit on it. I didn't stew mm -hmm. in it, which is so easy to do too, right? For us to just say, well, you, Austin, made me feel this way. Mm -hmm. This emotion came up. Now I'm going to sit and it's just going to build and it's going to build and it's going to build. And it doesn't take a whole lot of things to cause that closet door to bust open. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is one thing that grows so big that it can't be contained anymore. Right. And so it's important to always be willing to place it out there in a way that doesn't place blame, but still expresses what's going on within you and do it quickly. Like when it's happening, Acknowledge it for yourself. Even if you don't tell the other person, acknowledge it for yourself. Feel your feels, yeah. as we say. Feel right? your feels. Feel your feels. Um, allow the emotions so that you can get the information. Right? Beautifully said, my love. Yeah. And thank you for always allowing me to feel my feels. <laughs> <laughs> right back at you. And for anyone out there who needs permission to feel your feels, go for it. Have the emotions that you have, feel what you feel, and then take some time to pause and unpack and then look at it from different perspectives. And just like you would anything that you're putting away in a closet for a different time, understand what you want to hold on to and what you don't. And anything you don't desire to hold on to, use tools and resources to let it go, whether that's journaling, meditating, all of the different tools that we know are available, take the time. And you can find that that closet is a little less cluttered as you do this. Mm -hmm.